welcome to the Retire While You Work podcast. I've got uh, my team with me. I've got Carson and Miles of Adams Wealth Partners, and we're ready to kick off the new year. And uh, what's the topic today, boys? New year, new you, something like that? Something like that. I think um, kick off the year, a few things just that anybody can do to get started on the right foot with their finances. I think we have a, a few bullet points that I think would be some really good recommendations for people. And we can go into personal stories and what we each do to kick off the year to help get on top of our finances. But David, you start. What's Do you have any sort of routine things you do in January to make sure your year is going to be how you want it financially? Oh, so financially, we're going through financial stuff, not all the personal things that we do. And we can, I don't want we to can hit on emotions. We can go through your emotions <laughs> if you want, but up to or you. It could have been like physical health and my cold plunge and all that stuff, but we, all right, we'll keep it uh, financially focused today. Um, yeah. So beginning of the year, that's for me, always after uh, Christmas and right around new year's is a time I try to focus on looking at everything from my um, projected like next year's income and expenses, kind of looking at the year before and saying, okay, here was my income. Here's what I spent. Here's how much I saved. Very, very high level stuff, but to kind of set the, uh, kind of set intentions for the new year. So I did that um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, also is a great time to go through and like um, rebalance portfolio. So I sat on actually with both of you, we went over, we, we went over all of my personal stuff, looked at all the accounts, found, we looked for ways to simplify. Do we have eight accounts? Well, maybe we only need six accounts, things like that. And then also rebalance portfolios based on kind of current market conditions, just like we do for any clients. I think that's a great time to get with your financial team to do that. Um, what other housekeeping did we do? Some of that was on business. Of course, we went through our P&L from QuickBooks and stuff from the from a business perspective, which we can talk about business stuff if we want. But on a personal front, um, and then looking at, you know, looking at just kind of tax strategies for the year, is there anything I need to do before tax time or even, even for the new year as far as uh, tax loss harvesting or things with investments? Um, all those kind of things. Those were the big ones, but mainly, I guess, reviewing my budget and spending and then, um, just cleaning up the portfolio. What about, what about you too? Um, I can go. I think I'm more of a numbers guide than my wife is. And I keep a personal QuickBooks and anytime I try to say, Hey, let's go through some details. Rachel's not necessarily thrilled. Boring. By any means. Yep. Boring. <laughs> Pretty boring, but I think it's just great for anybody um, and it's not so much from a budget perspective to like restrict yourself from spending. I think it's great just to review as a whole, just 30,000 foot view, review, what did I take in? What did I spend? What did I save? And I think that's just healthy to do for anybody just to have an understanding of what your money that you're bringing in, where is it going? And it's a time of reflection to say, do I like this? Is there anything I want to change about this? Do I want to save more? Do I want to spend more on travel? Um, that sort of thing. So then you can have your goals started for the new year. But as far as just um, personal spending front, I think that's one of the highest priority things you can do is reflect and also plan. Um, so that's us. What about you, Moss? Yeah, I think I like to do just a lot of reflection on the past year. I think we get caught up in the, I think all of us here get caught up in the current moment and looking forward and other goals we want to accomplish. But I think it's also important to look back and reflect on where you were the last year, a couple of years, five years. I heard a, heard a quote one time that I thought was pretty cool. And it was, um, you've already accomplished goals that you said would make you happy, but then you just move right on to the next goal. And I think it's important to re look back and realize that there's goals that you've accomplished that were important to you and got you to where you are today and just reflect on all those. And then- So, so count your wins. Yeah, count your wins. And I think like, like you said, David, um, just looking ahead to maybe some rule changes that might affect- myself or clients and how we can plan for those and uh, just better my situation and all of our client situations as well. Yep. Um, and one thing too, I know I'm thinking from a client perspective and obviously it, it affects us too as financial advisors and us being our own clients, just looking at all the changes and regulations with contribution limits. So obviously each year 401k limits go up a little bit, thousand bucks here or there. Same thing with IRA contributions, SEP IRAs, Roth IRAs, all those things. So it's a great time. Like for, I know a lot of clients may say, Hey, we've, we have our 401k at work or IRA with Adams Wealth Partners set up to max out. But if that number changes, you need to get with your team and say, Hey, bump it up to another hundred bucks a month or whatever it is to make sure that you max it out and get the full tax deduction. Um, that's something that came to mind. I think, and on a 401k front, if you're not maxing it out, if you're 
you know, to use easy math, if you make $100,000, you're putting 10% of your salary in, you're saving $10,000 a year. Some of the best advice I received a long time ago, and I think it's great advice, is that January 1st of every year, bump your contribution percentage up 1%, because then you're going to be saving more, but it's usually a small enough amount to where it's probably not going to affect your budget too much. So if you're just bumping up 1%, that's an extra $1,000 over the course of the year, less than $100 a month, just by each and every calendar year, bump your contribution up 1% and 10, 15 years go down and uh, down the line, you're going to be extremely grateful that you uh, that you did that. So I think that's oh, a great practice to put in. I want to add into that too. Maybe if you got a raise or a new job where you had a big income bump, taking that into account as well, maybe you can do, instead of doing 1%, maybe you can do 5 or 10%, depending on what the change looked like for you. So just there was a big change in your financial situation that led to some higher income or maybe some sort of inheritance with some extra cash to be able to contribute somewhere, just um, looking at it from that perspective as well. Yeah, but that's, that's a good point, Miles. Like if you get a, somebody gets a $20,000 a year raise at work before it's, while it's newfound money, before you go and spend it all, you can say, hey, I'm going to go ahead and put $5,000 more towards my bucket three retirement account or whatever before you miss it while still having the extra 15000 for lifestyle creep and trips and things like that. So it's always a good time. Always a good time to do that. I think we see that with clients on a monthly basis. Anyways, our clients who contribute monthly automatically versus those who say, look at what this quarterly to see what they have sitting in cash. The ones that are the most disciplined are the ones that proactively take action to make contributions automatically versus reactively just seeing where they're at at the end of the quarter. Always. And I think back to over 20 years of doing this, when I've seen clients to your point miles, like, Hey, you know, every quarter I'm in real estate and I get quarterly commissions or I'm a songwriter and I get quarterly royalties, whatever it is. I'll just call you guys at the end of every quarter and I've got an extra 20 grand and checking, I'll move it over. It just doesn't happen. I mean, it happens maybe 30% as often as someone that says that does it automatically. So what I'll say to that, well, maybe you don't know how much that bonus is going be every quarter, but for the last 10 years, you know, it's averaged 20,000 a quarter. So why don't we just do $5,000 a quarter or $10,000 a quarter on autopilot. So that happens automatically. And then each quarter just use that to true it up just so that there's some automatic discipline that's being instilled on the front end. It's just way much, you know, way better results from an investor perspective, historically behavioral finance 101. It's just the way we're wired as humans. Yep. Good. I think um, another bullet point that we had was when it comes to taxes, obviously not the most fun subject in the world, but um, you know, if you find yourself, there's one situation where you can find yourself frequently getting a huge refund um, every April, whenever you file your tax return, January is a great time. It's a fresh start for the whole year with your withholding. So find the form W4 and adjust your withholding because the last thing you want to do is give the government a free loan on a monthly basis to use your money and you not get it back until the following April. So work with a CPA, work with a professional to sit here to help calculate what withholding you need to have withheld out of your paycheck, every single paycheck or every single month, uh, just so that it usually ends up putting more money into your pocket. Or if you're not in that camp, you end up owing a lot of money in April get into the routine of having more money withheld out of your paycheck. So you're not stuck with the big tax bill in April. Yeah. And I've heard clients for years like, oh, it's great. I got a $20,000 refund. And to your point, we're always like, well, yeah, you let the government borrow your money. It didn't matter as much the last five years when the, you know, the opportunity cost to having your money was half a percent in a money market at a bank. But now that, you know, money markets and savings accounts and CDs pay can pay 5% plus having your money in your pocket throughout the year is, is very beneficial to you versus the government having it when, uh, when you can get paid paid on that money. So something to think about. Um, let's see what else, what else do y'all, what else do we have clients do at the beginning of the year? I know we always bring up, you know, reviewing a state plan. Um, it's not something you get redone every year. A lot of time, I mean, first of all, 70% of the country, most people still do not have a will or any estate plan. So that's still the thing I always go back to. So if you don't have one, get something done, even if it's, I, I see this all the time. It's, well, we met with an estate attorney, and we just can't decide who's going to be the guard, you know, the guardian of our kids, or we're not sure if his sister or my brother is going to be our executor. Choose some, choose someone just to get it on paper. So God forbid, if something happens to you, there is some sort of plan that's at your will versus um, the courts. And then assuming you have a plan set up, I'd say each year, it's just a good time just to spot check it and just go, yep, nothing's really changed. All this looks good. Probably from experience, Every five years or so, there will be some sort of change in a document. 
Um, and then certainly if you have any life events, you get, you know, married, divorced, or have a falling out with the family member or somebody in your family passes away. That was a key player in your estate plan. You want to get all that stuff updated. So we see that happen a lot. Um, people just don't think about it. It's been 15 years and then, um, we bring it up and, you know, Lord and behold it, their, their estate plan was from a state they lived in two states ago and it's a little outdated. Yeah. I mean, it's something that takes two minutes to review annually, but can save your family. I mean, months and maybe even years of headaches if what you had on there wasn't, wasn't how things were supposed to be. And after something happens to you, it's pretty much impossible to reverse that, what you had in writing. Yep. So it takes two minutes to make sure that everything is how it's supposed to be. Could do an entire podcast on um, things gone wrong with poor estate planning and that sort of thing. But I won't, we won't do that today, but just know it is very, very, very important. And uh, along the estate planning lines, life insurance, again, probably not buying life insurance every year, but uh, great, th you know, beginning of the year, I just did this with mine. I got with uh, our CFO, Christine, I pulled out all this. I was like, you know, let's look at my disability insurance and, um, you know, my life insurance and my uh, key man insurance on me and the business. And we went through all that, just pulled out the documents, just made sure that my understanding was still the same. Like, what is the, what is the annual premium? Are we paying it each year? Are we paying it quarterly? Because, you know, it's cheaper to pay it once a year. Just looking at all those things and making sure the company hasn't changed because a lot of these insurance companies get bought out and you just, you start getting confused. Like, wait, I thought I had a Hartford life insurance policy and now it's with whoever. It's just a good time to just to check those. And again, you may just have a term life insurance policy and that's it. Um, but I found that to be very helpful. I had three different disability policies and that was by design for different reasons. And then this year I decided, you know, I wanted to, kind of reshop those. It had been a couple of years and see if there was a way to consolidate those and made, made a couple of small changes and, you know, it took a little bit of time, but it was, it was, you know, to a net benefit for me and the company to, to kind of up, upgrade those benefits. So definitely worthwhile. Anything y'all to add to that with estate planning or life insurance? I would say it's another great time to, if you're a client of ours, if you work with a financial advisor, perfect time of year to sit down and just do a planning session for the entire year. Because if you got a raise, you can discuss how much you're saving with your financial advisor. You can discuss uh, what you're contributing to on a monthly basis. You can discuss your life insurance, your estate plan with them. As we are um, experts, they're experts in those fields. So it's a great time to, you're not alone in doing this. You're not alone in planning the year. For our clients, this is exactly what we do. And what we love is planning and strategy for the future. So use us to your advantage, reach out to us and have a planning meeting for the whole year. Yeah, I would just say every, everything's that much easier if you can look ahead and be proactive versus reactive and plan 6, 12, a couple of years ahead and have everything in order so that when you need money or something crazy happens in your life and and you need help rather than having to figure it out in five minutes, you know, you've been planning for that for the last six months. Yeah, and I'll say most of this was kind of geared on a personal level, but as a, as a business owner myself and many of you listening and also a lot of our clients are small, mid-sized business owners. Same thing with your business. Again, we we spent the beginning, Carson and I spent a week or so going through all of our QuickBooks transactions. Again, really exciting stuff, but it was, it felt really good when we got done with it. Just categorizing them, making sure they're in the right accounts and QuickBooks so that we could build a pro forma budget for 2024. We're able to say, okay, this is these are the raises we gave our staff. So payroll is going to cost us, I'm making this number up, payroll is going to cost us an extra hundred grand this year and our rent's going up or whatever from this to this. And so we know at the beginning of the year, okay, our, our top line revenue has to grow by $250,000 to break even. And this is what it needs to grow at for us to grow at this percentage. Just thinking like a CEO and um, and, and CFO and, and, and running those numbers and doing the same thing you would on a personal note on your business. Um, it's a great time of year to do both because it's really a lot of the same exercises. Yep. The, uh, one of the last things I have, I don't know if you'll have any other points, but one of the last things I have is for business, personal, any sort of front, take one month, take December's credit card statement, bank account statement, whatever you spend your money on, print it out, read through every single transaction. It might be a lot. That way you can understand, oh, I didn't know I was still paying for Apple music and I don't use Apple music anymore. Or I didn't know I was still paying for Paramount, Paramount. I subscribed for a month yep. to watch Yellowstone and I don't watch Yellowstone anymore because there's not a new season. Whatever Great the case show. is, whatever the case is, take the time, spend 20, 30 minutes, print out all your statements, look through all the fine print because more than likely there's probably more money than you think that's being thrown away on subscriptions that you forgot to unsubscribe to.
Carson, I mean, obviously all three of us do this all day, every day. And um, I'm even a CPA myself. And I was surprised I did that exact exercise. And I can't remember, I think I had like two Hulu accounts because one was at home and one was here. And we ended up figuring it out in a Pandora account, a Spotify account, trying to figure out. I mean, you you definitely more than likely in, in today's world is of subscription services, you'll probably find one or two things that could be $10, $20 a month, which is a few hundred bucks a year. And it's just wasteful. It doesn't matter if you make $10 million a year. Most most of us would prefer to clean that stuff up and do something else with that money. So that's it's kind of the, the world they live in. It's kind of that gotcha. They know that people forget about it. And that's kind of the way the model's built. So don't be a victim of that. That's right. Stay on top of it. That's um, right. All good stuff. And I'll say um, also, if, if you're a first time listener, um, we've got all sorts of, uh, we've got other events. If you know, if you listen to the podcast, that's great. You can always reach out to us, um, David at adamswealthpartners.com. Visit our website, adamswealthpartners.com. We have some upcoming women and wealth event. We have a market webinar coming up. We always have things on the agenda. If you're someone who wants to, likes what we're, like, likes what you're hearing and wants to be a little bit more involved. But um, anything else? New year, new, new me kind of thing? That's all I got. Yeah. I think those are, those are some good ones to get started on. Um, take a look at your finances like you do maybe some other New Year's resolutions versus neglecting them and realizing it's July before you know it. Yep. Updating your upgrading your 401k IRA contributions, looking at your budget, spending, your estate plan, your life insurance, and all those housekeeping things, and then kind of putting together a plan and a pro forma for your for your business. So um, enjoyed it. This is uh, this week's episode of Retire While You Work, and we'll be back here soon. Any opinions are those of myself and not necessarily those of Raymond James. Expressions of opinion are as of this date and are subject to change without notice. The information contained in these podcasts do not purport to be a complete description of the securities market or developments referred to in this material. The information has been obtained from sources considered to be reliable, but we do not guarantee that the foregoing material is accurate or complete. Every investor situation is unique and you should consider your investment goals, risk tolerance, and time horizon before making any investment. Prior to making an investment decision, please consult with your financial advisor about your individual situation. Any hypothetical examples are for illustration purposes only. Actual investor results will vary. Raymond James does not provide legal or tax services. Please discuss these matters with the appropriate professional.